Australia, we are now joined in the studio by Kate Herbert to talk theatre. And we're going to start by talking about After Rebecca. That's correct. And it's lovely to see you here, it's Mel. It's lovely to see you yeah, here as well. That was a nice surprise. Um, so, yes, I will start with After Rebecca, which is no longer in the theatre, but it's in the theatre at La Mama. It was there. It was filmed for a live stream. Something went wonky with the um, sending out of the live stream, but it then goes to what's called La Mama On Screen. I'll talk a bit at the end about my show, Lung, which is on the on screen from Monday Absolutely. as well. We'll do a little plug. Um, so La Mama On Screen has a couple of shows at the moment, two fringe shows. One is called Disorder, which is spelt in a, ro- a rather odd, like D-Y-S hyphen, etc. That's on. But this After Rebecca, written by Emma Gibson, is a solo show. And if anybody out there knows the Daphne du Maurier book or the movie, um, Rebecca, it's based on that, but it's a contemporary version, a sort of you know Melbourne-based or Australian-based version of that. So it's a solo performance by a Michelle Cooper, as I said, written by Emma Gibson. And it's, I describe it as self-narration or first-person narration. So think about, it's someone telling the story and uh, while she's telling her own story, she does a little bit of dialogue as other characters. So she's not performing uh, multiple characters, multiple roles, but she's performing the narration of her yeah, she, narrative. She's herself, but telling you about the yeah about the experience. Yeah. yeah. So what's interesting about the well, the, the content is challenging. Um, she's a naive and underconfident single young production assistant uh, on a reality show. Um, it's the farmer wants a wife. If you know that, I think I've watched an ad for it. That's about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so she's swept off her feet. She's really naive. She's swept off her feet by this rather handsome and glamorous and charming contestant who you know looks like he might have a bit of a dodgy past, but we don't know that. We just get a sense of foreboding, yeah. which becomes more and more so as it goes on. Um, so he whisks her off away from her job, away from his contract on, on the show, back to his enormous sheep station or whatever it is, sheep or cattle, throws away her phone, I'll get you a new one, doesn't pay her. She's working essentially as his, as his assistant, but also with sort of she becomes a virtual prisoner. And as we listen to her telling her story, we feel her sense of foreboding and what's coming next, and it becomes dangerous and violent. Yeah. And she's living in the shadow of the dead wife, yeah. Rebecca. Yeah. So it is a similar sort of um, version of the. Yeah. And it, it talks to, uh, it sounds like it talks to a lot of kind of. Subjects that never get old. They're always yeah. they're always hot button subjects. What yes. we would now call coercive control. Coercive control is the issue, yeah. And, and you know, abuse. manipulation yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and and sex gaslighting. Show, and gaslighting. All, all of that is in it. It's um, it, it is very interesting. And I suppose the message is very clear. Look before you leap. Um, yeah. You know, don't stranger danger. Oh. <laughs> Glamorous strangers can take you up a perilous path. All that jazz. But it is. Don't it, go on a farm. I want a bride. <laughs> It's really that simple. Exactly. Or any of those reality shows. Um, in terms of the performance, um, Cooper hits – it's a clever reworking, the writing, but she hits her stride late, later in the more dangerous section. At the beginning is a little bit of a sort of nervous giggle that she uses to play that naivety. gets a little bit um, repetitive, I suppose. Yeah. This brings us to our next Absolutely. I, I should, I should, uh, I should you know, paint a picture of the studio right now for the, for the listeners. Uh, we have – the, the, the air is thick with cigar smoke and cognac. It because is indeed. we are going to be talking about burlesque. And who better to talk us through this than, than Kate here? Let me just put on the husky burlesque voice and see wow. if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> there was quite a lot of that in the show. So what I'm going to talk about now as I <coughs> cough my way through the cigar smoke yeah. uh, is Global Smash Club. Kind of gives you an idea of the okay. you know, the nature of it. It is yes, a burlesque show by our fabulous Melbourne-based Finnie Kane and Smith, Moira Finnie Kane and Jackie Smith, who've been doing this for twenty years. This particular um, t- kind of variety show burlesque, and this is their twentieth anniversary show. So some of their favourites, some of their highlights, have come back into this. Uh, it's a, a parade of different acts and quite a few of them by, are by Moira Finucane, who is really the queen of our um, contemporary cabaret burlesque. Uh, so if you haven't seen one of their shows, um, you've got two opportunities tonight only, 7pm and 9pm at the Trades Hall. Big, big show. Um, it's, it's, it's busy and um, you can't book a sp- specific seat, so get there a bit early so you can grab a good one. 
If you're a bit sensitive to sexual references, you know, the explicit content, nudity, full frontal and full backal, <laughs> or explicit language, then, you know, stay home. Because there's quite a lot of that in oh, the song. Go full it? backal. Full I'm backal, a... yeah, full, full all sorts I, of I things. Am, I am shocked and horrified. <laughs> But anyway, I'll... I don't know what you call that. Full, full <laughs> rear nudity. You need a few more words, don't you? Full posterior. <laughs> uh, it is risque and it's bordering on erotica. It's glamorous, sometimes tilting into parody or even kitsch. Very kitsch often. And um, it's confronting with an occasional edge of danger. Yeah. Sometimes they're in the audience, you know, getting into your face. And one of those, more if you can, is the pulsating heart of the, um, of the eclectic burlesque lineup. And uh, when I talk about a bit of danger, she does a character called the Milk Queen. Now, think of two big plastic bottles of, what, two litre bottles of milk with the lids pierced. And uh, she's in a, a, a what colour gown is she in this one? White, I think. And it starts sort of splashing about, spraying about, squirting about. Mm-hmm. And the front rows are given plastic tablecloths yeah. and umbrellas. Because it flies. Yeah. The first three rows, don't sit there. Yeah. Uh, Especially if you don't do dairy. If, oh, yes. I'm allergic, Absolutely. so I couldn't sit there. So they were cowering under their umbrellas. It was very funny. Uh, that's one of her characters. She, she does another, which is uh, a yobbo. And that's uh, miming along to I touch myself, dressed with a beard uh-huh. and a ponytail <laughs> and jeans and a real blokey. It's f- hilarious. And um, another one, which is a bit similar, she seems to like sort of splashing foodie things about. This is one I haven't seen, which is a bowl of what looks like tomato passata or something that she's eating like soup, and it all becomes okay. very sexual and provocative. It ends up all over it. Right. I've, I've we seen say. some images of, of that one in particular, yeah, and yeah. I was thinking, what is that? What is, is that? that? Is that- is that like sort is it of theatrical fake blood or, or yeah? What? Oh, um, no, yeah, she's, okay. she's eating tomato okay. p- soup or something. There's something quite particularly uh, um, strange about eating savoury yeah. while you're in that in that sort of situation. <laughs> I don't know quite why. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, point. Perhaps you can have perhaps some sugar. that's an insight into my it could, uh, yes, my could life, be could anyway. be raspberry compote or yeah. something, couldn't it? <laughs> um, the other so. Maud, uh, Maura Finia Kane is hilarious. Maud Davey is my other favourite. Um, if Maura is the, the queen of um, fringe cabaret and burlesque, Maud Davey is my my queen of fringe theatre, independent theatre and now mainstream. She's even got an OA Order of Australia or medal or one of those a couple of years ago. Several outrageous characters and wild songs and the wildest being, am I ever going to see your face again? The Angels from the 80s. Yeah, yeah. and we all know the next With the shouting bit. response, yeah. which I put into the the online review, but I won't say here, yeah. but it's got lots of expletives fin- and the crowd fin- joined in. Fingers are hovering over the red button. Yes, here, yes I'm not going to say it. I won't. <laughs> um, let's say there's bleep, bleep, bleep and bleep. Um, so crowd got into that and by the end of the whole show they were they dancing would. like maniacs. <laughs> My other favourite in the their lineup is always Yumi Umiyamaro, who was a um uh, Australian Japanese um Butoh performer originally, Butoh being the slow, grotesque um form of Japanese theatre performance, which is extraordinary to watch. Mm. And so her performance is often drawing on that uh style. So in one her main solo one, she's in a a red kimono and that graceful, almost geisha-like sort of appearance, and then that comes off slowly. And there's a samurai um, outfit underneath, so she's much more samurai um, martial artist. And then under that is another, like a ninja costume, and under that is just a kind of long, I suppose you call it a long lap lap. And it's never vulnerable. The nudity is not about vulnerability; it's about strength. It's extraordinary to watch. Yeah. Quite a different tone from the other. So there's some hilarious. Some musical, a number of singers. Mama Alto makes a, an appearance. There's a, a parodic take on Hello Kitty, the Japanese sort of learn a cutesy girl um, outfits with um, uh, Yumi, Moira and Maud in these fluffy costumes. But she turns into this scary feline when she sticks her little Hello Kitty bag over her head. It turns into a mask. It's like a, a scary masked Halloween transformation. So there's a bit of spooky stuff. Um uh, another uh, woman called Imogen Kelly, who is another burlesque queen who's done, I think, Las Vegas work, who has this extraordinary hooped white lycra circular, starts off as a kind of gown that she can twist and it turns into a like a Dior gown or a Melbourne Cup hat or a tent. Wow. It just keep, keeps transforming. It is extraordinary to see.
So okay. it's worth seeing just for that costume, but she is wonderful as well. Wow. So, okay. um, so that was the... Global Smash Club by Finya Kane and Smith. And you've got tonight, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. And um, do we have a second for me to do the plug? No? We're gonna, music first? We're going to have some music. And, and then, then I'll then do my plug. Then you can do your plug. Don't can I you do worry. My, can I do my burlesque voice as well? <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, played by the Jimmy Smith uh, Jazz Ensemble. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, now we have uh, Kate... Uh, Kate Herbert is still here. I'm still here. Uh, and she's going to be talking with us about Lung, her very own play. Yeah, I am. And I talked about it some time ago in May when it was actually on in the theatre at um, La Mama. And uh, the show I talked about um, just before the music uh, after Rebecca is La Mama on screen. And Lung starts a one-week on-screen season this coming week. It's part of the Seniors Festival, but it's through La Mama. Uh, it's... It's great watching stuff at home, I have to say. I know I'm talking about my own show, but I love it. I watched after Rebecca on screen. You can sit at home, as long as you've got access to your computer. You set up a little account, you put in your email and make your own password, and then you just pay your $10, way cheaper yeah, than going to the theatre. It, it can be a terrific experience. Oh, it really yeah. is. So long, we, we start... Um, any time over the twelve, the sorry, seven days from Monday to this following Sunday, 21 to 27 October... You can access it through La Mama on screen. But Lung is um, a play about a woman who's awaiting a lung transplant. Now, yeah. it sounds really grim and dark, but it's actually got a lot of comedy in it. And I've got a number of older actors and an older director, really experienced actors in it. Because the lungs actually form a, a kind of a Greek chorus. Yeah, they're, right? they're yeah. Character. they are characters. There's a right. left and a right lung. When I first wrote it, it was a half-hour radio play, and there was only one lung. Yeah. The sort of lung was both of them. And they are like a Greek chorus, and they're also rather – they're pretty funny and also – tragic because they're the lungs that are going to be removed of course yeah. uh, so there's the the woman and there's also a lot of material about carer fatigue because her partner her husband is really finding it difficult to manage and her mum who's you know going to lose her little girl it's got a happy ending uh, and it's got jokes I'm and it's only 45 a minutes alert there, and guys, it's online but... so yeah have a look go to La Mama on screen Absolutely. That sounds incredible. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Pleasure. Kate. It's been lovely seeing you. Yeah, again. you too. Thanks for, so much for your time. And that's all from Arts Week.